At BlenderCon, they announced that AI is coming to Blender. So what is it going to look like? Is this just another hype grab? Because when I first heard that Blender was adding AI, I was not happy. But now that I understand how it's going to be implemented, I'm very excited. There are three areas that were specifically mentioned in the presentation. So what is this implementation going to look like? Well, our main source of information is from this presentation at BlenderCon. And the whole thesis behind Blender's AI is to empower artists to create a tool set that doesn't take away from the process, but rather helps with tedious tasks and technical details. So what is that going to look like? Well, to understand, let me explain how AI works. Imagine that you're opening a restaurant and you want to create your signature dish. So you do some testing and create a lasagna recipe that is perfect. That recipe was pretty easy to make. It took 10 hours to perfect, and it only does one thing. It shows your cooks how to make your signature lasagna. Now imagine that you hire an assistant chef who went to culinary school for four years and all he did the entire time was study recipes. So you ask him to show your cooks how to make the lasagna and he does it in seconds without having to prepare a recipe because of his studies. But he also spent 10,000 hours studying recipes to get to this point. Now if you only needed him to show your cooks how to make the lasagna, it would make much more sense just to use the recipe that took 10 hours to make, but he could also make a large variety of other dishes and do it easily. This is the difference between traditional algorithms and AI. AI is extremely powerful, but using it where it isn't needed is a massive waste of time because you wouldn't hire a chef to do the job of a recipe. Because sometimes you can use other tools to do what you could do with generative AI. You don't need AI where a traditional algorithm already works. So where is it needed? There are three areas that were specifically mentioned in the presentation, but there are also three that weren't directly mentioned, but might be on the horizon. Let's start by looking at what AI integrations were directly mentioned. First is denoising. Blender already has AI. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's in the open uh, image denoiser, for example. This is awesome, but it's already been implemented. The reason it was mentioned is because Blender is also looking at leveraging AI to improve temporally stable denoising and to make it more efficient. But let's stop for just a second. For each new AI tool, I want to answer four essential questions about it. First, what is it going to look like? For denoising, it's just going to look the same. It'll just be in the background, speeding up your renders, which is nice because that leads into the second question. How will it change your workflow? Because it's running in the background, AI denoising won't change your workflow at all. You don't need to learn a new tool. It just allows you to spend less time rendering and more time creating. Thirdly, why is AI better at denoising? Why are we using this instead of a traditional algorithm? The very first AI image generators used a method called diffusion, and it's still very popular today. It essentially uses noise to generate images. Basically, this is very oversimplified. It takes an image, adds a ton of noise to it, then looks at your prompt and denoises that image in a way that matches your prompt. Blender's open image denoiser uses similar techniques. However, instead of hallucinating new images, it just cleans up the noise. Finally, the fourth question. Is this going to cost people their jobs? And for AI denoising, this one's pretty obvious. I don't see AI leading to any job loss. This wouldn't be any different than adding a more powerful GPU to your computer. It won't replace artists, but it does help to empower them. Which is great because that's the entire goal behind this integration. And there are two main ways to empower artists. You can improve the tool set, which is what Blender is trying to do right now, but you can also make it easier for the artist to learn. That's where today's sponsor, Brilliant, comes in. Have you ever tried to learn a new skill? Well, I have, and it's really hard. You have to force yourself to be disciplined and get better Better. And most of the time, at least for me, it ends in failure. But Brilliant makes the learning process easy. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that it's effortless, but they provide simple and digestible lessons that you can complete every single day. Personally, I've always wanted to learn Python, but I had no idea how it worked. But within the first day, I understood how it worked and continued to build my skill set from there. Brilliant is where you learn by doing, with thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI. And because Brilliant makes it much easier to be consistent, you'll learn much more effectively. It's a perfect way to pass the time instead of mindless scrolling, because you can learn anywhere, right on your phone. If you use my link in the description or go to brilliant.org filmstop, 
you'll get a 30 day free trial and 20% off an annual subscription. Anyways, let's get back to the video. The second integration of AI is going to be a lot more groundbreaking. It's AI object mapping. Basically, whenever you want to add textures to a 3D object, you have to create what's called a UV map that tells Blender how to project 2D textures onto a 3D object. For instance, a cube has this object map, and this is the one of an icosphere. It's almost like unfolding origami, but as 3D artists, we have to create object maps for objects like this or this, which is extremely repetitive and time consuming, making this a perfect candidate for AI. We already have some automatic features like Smart UV Project, but it could use a lot of improvement. So what is this going to look like? Well, we weren't officially told, but it would make a lot of sense to have this in the UV Unwrap dropdown. Similar to the Smart UV Project option, but with increased accuracy and more control. This would change texturing entirely. Con would be the hours of tedious UV editing. Instead, we would have an automatic tool that would allow us to save more time for the creative task. This is a perfect task for AI. Unwrapping is complex. Every model is unique, meaning you need to have a more advanced way to handle that variation. This would be a case when having the chef would be much better than the recipe because he is flexible and can adapt to every new situation. I do think this could lead to some small layoffs, but only because productivity is increasing, meaning you need a smaller staff to accomplish the same goal. However, we've seen these same kind of layoffs in history every time there's been new technological progress. The third confirmed AI integration is extremely ambitious. Or even imagine a, a large language model that can help people within the uh, Blender text editor to write Python scripts. This is something that would be a much bigger change. We've seen the same sort of tech in add-ons like Blender GPT, but having a native integration would be much more powerful. So what would this look like? Well, if we use other Python language models as a loose guideline, they allow you to write a prompt and then the AI will write a Python script that adds whatever you asked for into Blender. So the implications of this are huge. If Blender went in the same direction as many of these add-ons, it would completely change how it operates. But remember, Blender's thesis behind this AI integration is to empower artists. Francesco literally said, So you didn't hear me saying that everything is gonna be one big AI. <laughs> but you saw written tiny, it says like, empower artists. I believe that a large language model that successfully does what these other add-ons are trying to do would not be in line with the guidelines he laid out in his talk. But I don't know what Blender has in mind. So those are the AI integrations that were directly mentioned. But there are three more ways that Blender could use AI that would be extremely beneficial and impactful. And I know Francesco has watched at least one of my videos because he emailed me after this one. So maybe we'll see some of these features later on down the line, but that's up to the Blender team. First is an image texture generator. Now hear me out. Image textures essentially allow you to bring the real world into Blender. We don't want to replace that, but there have been so many times when I've taken a picture or downloaded one and wanted to use that as a texture, but I don't have a displacement roughness or bump map. And I'm able to sort of get by by using the color information to sort of get the desired effect. But if we had an AI model that could analyze the image and to generate each of those different maps based on the color information, that would be a huge time saver. The implementation could just be included in its own add-on, similar to Node Wrangler. With a Node Wrangler add-on installed, you can just press Control shift t to create an image texture node tree. With this AI model, if you don't have an image for each of the four channels, you could just have a little pop-up that comes up and you have the option to generate those images. This would mean artists don't have to learn any new tools, but could have higher quality textures from regular images. And let me know what you think of these suggestions in the comments. I'm just one person. Second is weight painting. And in a broader sense, retopology too. Both of these are very time consuming and tedious, which makes them perfect candidates for AI. In Blender, we already have remeshing capabilities. Those are great. But if you actually want to create a character with good topology that's ready to rig and animate, then you're looking at hours of tedious, slow retopology just to get to that point. This would also follow the motto of empowering artists. No one wants to weight paint or retopologize models. You're just saving time on a tedious, monotonous tasks and allowing people to create better renders. The third AI implementation is a little bit more ambitious, but I think it could be an invaluable tool. And that's an AI assistant. 
Now hear me out. We've seen something similar to this with the add-on blend.ai, which basically just adds an AI personal assistant that can guide you through technical details for what you're trying to accomplish. In a talk at BlenderCon, Andrew Price, more commonly known as Blender Guru, mentioned the things that Blender can improve about their UI. And there's a lot. But specifically, he talked about troubleshooting. This is something we deal with all the time as 3D artists. There will be an object with artifacts or that isn't rendering properly, and we'll have to spend minutes or hours trying to figure out what's wrong. He basically suggested a troubleshooting system that allows you to ask Blender what's going wrong with an object, and it would say, you may need to apply scale to bevel your edges properly. This is just one example, but adding a troubleshooting system like this would be a complex task something that a traditional algorithm or procedural solution would struggle with, which is why I think AI could possibly be the best solution. Ultimately, AI is a tool. As long as we don't overhype it by treating it like the devil or our salvation, it becomes much easier to find actual applications for the technology. All we can do is try our best as artists, leverage the tools we have, and try to make our best work. So if you're on a mission to become the best Blender artist that you can, you should subscribe or just watch this video right here.